So the Supreme Court is, of course, getting involved in the homeless situation. They will decide what cities can do about tent encampments, which is different than obviously the laws that we had before. We are going to get into it. But before we do so, do not forget to one, leave a comment down below. Also like, subscribe and hit the thanks as well. Now let's get into this video. The Supreme Court will decide what cities can do about tent encampments. The Supreme Court announced it will hear a pivotal case that could transform homelessness policy in the United States. The case is the most significant legal challenge to the rights of homeless people in decades and how the court rules in a decision expected later this year will shape how cities respond to tent encampments. Grants Pass Orr versus Johnson Gloria et al. is a challenge to the 2018 federal class action lawsuit filed by three people who argued that the city of Grants Pass's laws and customs illegally punished them for being involuntarily homeless. Keyword involuntarily homeless. In 2022, a three-judge panel from the Ninth Circuit ruled in favor of the homeless plaintiffs. This was not a total surprise. The same appellate court had issued a landmark ruling four years earlier that said people without housing cannot be punished for sleeping or camping outside on public property if there are no adequate shelter alternatives available. That pivotal decision, Martin versus Boys, had fundamentally shaped cities' response to the homelessness crisis, especially in the nine western states under the Ninth Circus jurisdiction, where some 42% of the country's homeless population now lives. Leaders from dozens of cities and states, both liberal and conservative, both, huh, have been hoping the U.S. Supreme Court would, would overturn the Martin and Grant's past decision. Hmm, sound like y'all are on the same side, which they claim were incorrectly decided and leave governments ill-equipped to safely manage their communities. Many groups representing the rights of homeless people in turn have said there is no reason for the U.S. Supreme Court to reconsider the ruling as there is no clear disagreement among circuit courts to resolve. In the half decade since Martin came down, there have been dozens of cases affirming it, including the Fourth Circuit in Virginia. The lead original plaintiff for the Grants Pass case was Deborah Blake, who had experienced homelessness for roughly a decade and in that time racked up hundreds of dollars in fines and fees for sleeping outside and allegedly trespassing. By 2020, Blake owed over $5,000 in penalties for living outside. Blake died a year later at 62 and the case was renamed for another of the homeless plaintiff, Gloria Johnson. Supporters of the Grant Pass decision say the Ninth Circuit merely affirmed and clarified its prior decision in Martin, which found that punishing homeless people with no other place to go violates the Eighth Amendment's prohibition on cruel and unusual punishments. But opponents say that a describing civil penalties against unhoused people as unconstitutional, as opposed to just criminal penalties, Grand Pass actually represents a radical expansion of the Martin holding. By taking this case, the U.S. Supreme Court is likely to resolve a key question underlying this debate. Is it a violation of the Eighth Amendment to issue penalties whether jail time or tickets and fines against people experiencing homelessness, if they have no adequate shelter alternatives. What I would like you all to do is down below, let me know what your response would be. Do you believe this is cruel and unu unusual punishment or not? All right. Now, how much would it cost to end homelessness in America? You know, because I'm like, okay, well, can we just end it? How would that look? You know, what, what needs to be done? Whatever. How much does it cost? How much would it cost in homelessness in America? According to the Department of Housing and Urban Development, it would cost $20 billion to end homelessness in the United States. Now, you may say, whew, that is a lot of 
money. $20 billion? Oh, no. Oh, no. We don't have that kind of money. Well, you know, we got war. Well, you know what? We'll actually get into it. Let's look at this. How much aid has the U.S. sent to Ukraine? Total $75.4 billion. Huh. Weapons and equipments make up 23.5 but billion. So if it only cost us $20 billion to get rid of homelessness, just with weapons and equipments to Ukraine was 23.5. Okay, so we do have the money. Huh. Security assistance, 18.3. Grants and loans. Okay. So we, we got total military budget is twice, over twice as much as we would need to end homelessness just for that, huh? Interesting how that works, huh? So we can get rid of it. We choose not to get rid of it. All right. I have some little facts that I want to show you, some charts. Um, and this one, for example, is and his native Hawaiians and Pacific Islanders have the highest rate of homelessness in the United States. Mind you, they make up a very small percentage of the United States. Right under them are black people. Right under them are Native Americans. Wow. We see the people with the smallest population are experiencing the most. Black people, I guess you could say that we're the second highest. We're like 13.6%, I believe now. And we're the second highest. Hmm. Then you got Native Americans, which is under black people. And you guys are right under black people as well you know, in terms of population and how many people are experiencing homelessness. Another one says the number of homeless veterans has fallen since 2010, but this is still a, a pretty significant amount as well. All right. Uh, I have another one. Most homeless Americans are men. And you get to see this chart where you have men 60.6% and you have women 38.3. And then whatever else you identify as you see the percentages for it all right percentage of people experiencing homelessness in the particular areas that you may be in okay we got major cities 52 percent why would that be so high you got rural areas 18 percent suburban 23 urban seven percent now the major cities you see it it says 52 percent like dang that's high well, we're going to get into it because you have a high cost of living. OK, these areas are not if you look at a place like New York, for example, that's pricey. Look at a place like Chicago. That's pricey. Uh, Los Angeles. That's pricey. Miami. That's pricey. You know, so it's, it's pretty it's pretty steep racial disparities in homelessness. OK, so you got the percentage of the population versus how many are um, homeless all right so you got the white people um the percentage is a little bit more but you know is that the numbers won't equal 100 since you know people could fall into different kinds of categories as well you know so one person could say i'm white but i'm also hispanic or something like that so the percentages are going to be off but you see black people we don't make up that much yet we have quite a bit of homelessness compared to our population you also have hispanics don't make up that much, but you have quite a bit of homelessness compared to the population. Ind indigenous people don't make that much, but still a lot of homelessness compared to the population. So I have um, some more charts I want you all to look at. And you have homelessness counts have slightly decreased since 2007. All right. So you could just see um, of the unsheltered it's it's decreasing but then you see that it is kind of slightly increasing as time has gone on and obviously this uh these statistics are only from 2022 we have sheltered okay um as you see the numbers are going down but it's very slow that is going down okay but it's still high you know yes you're sheltered but it's still a high number and this is just overall the count that we have all right which is pretty significant i also want to show you all homelessness by state I have alaska 316 we got washington over here and i'm really just highlighting the ones where you have a whole bunch of homelessness going on and you could see these particular areas that we have them you know we got the district of columbia we got maine which maine i didn't think was even 
that high but when you start looking at it it's like nah it is pretty high massachusetts is getting up there rhode island ah, not so much you got vermont new york texas isn't as bad you would think how big it is you would think they would have you know a little bit more illinois is not that bad either you got georgia florida's kind of getting up there but they're not as bad okay and this goes through 2022 all right now i have a chart because you know just to hammer it in just a little bit more ukraine towers over other recipients of usa remember you know the whole russia ukraine i have my own opinions about it that whole thing uh the war that is still ongoing and even putin said hey let's have a peace treaty i got one let's go and get this negotiated and then the united states government said no if you go and do that oh Zelensky, if you go ahead and do that we'll go and just off you right now you're not gonna go and sign a peace treaty yet we keep giving them more money it's like they don't want the wars to stop hmm and we get to see how much money they gave them look at this homelessness they said is 20 billion did they not did i read that wrong when they said 20 billion to end homelessness yet you have a figure of 75.4 billion and it's just going to continue to grow israel we got jordan afghanistan ethiopia egypt yemen we have a whole bunch and it's like huh but we can't do anything about it all right so some things i was looking at and curious about what needs to happen what can we do how do we address this situation all right well i say first thing we have to look at the different issues that we have presented in front of us okay alex what are you talking about unaffordable housing is one of them okay if you can't afford to live in a home it, whether it is a condo town home apartment house insert trailer home whatever you cannot afford to live there you won't be able to live there obviously and you'll be on the street we're allowing big business i.e black rock you've got all these other little firms that are buying up these single family homes and something that would you know you get a mortgage maybe you're paying for a three bed two grand a month okay they're like well we could rent it out to you for four grand well what the heck and they've already bought the home, so it's not really much you can do. We have low-paying jobs. Minimum wage, to me, should be really $25, but $20. People are still saying, oh, $15, not in this economy, okay? I say minimum wage should really be $25, but I could go with $20, okay? But you have these jobs, $7.50. You have these, you know, Democrats really bringing in all these migrants who are okay with working for $7.50 an hour come on now you know what i mean people can't live on that that's not a livable wage deinstitutionalization mental health centers is another big thing it was what was it reagan who ended up getting rid of those but then you have people with mental health issues just out on the street that's a problem obviously substance abuse issues that's where you also you know have the institutions for these people to be going to get real help and get them set up for job transfers we have disabilities this is both mental and physical and we have a lot of these jobs who are not willing to um help them uh assist them in certain positions for example Working from home, that was also a big thing among people in the disabled community as well. Because they're saying, yo, if I can work from home, then I don't have to worry about, let's say I got a wheelchair or whatever the case may be. I don't have to worry about all that. Maybe I got some sensory issues and all the lights and all the noise and all the clicking and all that kind of stuff going on. I don't have to worry about all that because I'll be at my house. I could just mute you if I need to mute you and I could get my work done and I have to worry about all that. I don't have to worry about let me get up, get in the wheelchair, move over here, do all this, do all that. Or let me hurry up and try to, you know, do more, exert more energy for myself when I could just sit at my house and do the job, the same exact job from my house. You know, companies don't care. So that's why they're like, you know, F you, you're going to be coming into the office. And that's why you did have. A quite a few disabled individuals that I've noticed that were complaining saying like yo 
this was actually beneficial and you took it away from us because of your own greed and your own personal agendas you know so that's also something you can help people out by allowing them to you know have the flexibility to work from home but you choose not to do it all right another thing affordable health care universal health care we have a lot of people who they don't want other people to get it so they don't want you so they'll they'll be okay with not getting it if you know what i mean so you have stuff like that that happens as well also people who have disabilities whatever the case may be it's a crippling debt and now because we don't have it you got other countries who you know they have a kid for example cost them nothing here you have a kid it'll cost you thousands of dollars you know what i mean um whatever medicine you need is up 50 60 70 percent more than where you would get it from someone else you know in a different country so that's one of the issues that we have and by allowing that to happen let's say you broke your foot or let's say you got to get a surgery now they're charging you freaking seventy thousand dollars when over here they would have charged you in this other country maybe seven hundred dollars or five hundred dollars and then now it's like well i gotta pay the bill collectors are coming now you are in a bind and now you're homeless you know um lower taxes for the rich is what we've been having they should be paying more money there's no reason why someone who is making thirty thousand you know what let's say why someone is making forty five thousand dollars is paying the same amount of taxes as someone making a hundred thousand dollars that's ridiculous like you're you're literally making over double than what i'm making there's no reason why i should be paying what you're paying to so you have the people who are making less paying taking the grunt work of all the other people and then you got millionaires who are barely paying anything then we have finally the lack of public assistance and that goes for you know whether it's your mental health physical whatnot um you know you have children whatever the case may be so it's a whole bunch of different um things that need to be changed and our tax dollars need to be proportionally going to these different uh structures to aid in people not becoming homeless because i watched a whole documentary well it wasn't documentary but it was like a little piece um that happened in it was los angeles i believe and you had a lot of people here and they were like well i got a master's and blah 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 they said it's nothing about substance abuse or anything they said i simply just can't afford to live here yo you know and for me that's where i'll be I'm going to get, I'm going I'm to take out a loan or something, get a U-Haul and I'm going to pack my stuff up and I'm going to go, you know, because it's not worth it living in a state that, I mean, you can't afford. Somewhere like California, that's why you had during the, the road roof, you know what I mean? That's why you had a whole bunch of people when they were like, okay, you guys can work from home. A whole bunch of people from New York moving to Florida and they were moving in all these other different areas, going to Ohio, Idaho and all these other places because they're like, these places are much cheaper than this place. And I mean, now I get to work from home, but now companies are saying you got to come back. So I'm not sure how that whole thing worked out. You know, did you move back or how did that work? Because it's too pricey. But if you could get a job that's paying New York wages, let's say you're getting paid $28, $30 an hour, but now you're moving in the area where your mortgage or your rent, maybe let's say it's you and your boo that are shacked up together. Maybe you're only paying $1,000 a month for your rent, you know what I mean? But you're getting paid like $30 an hour and then some, you know what I mean? So I can see that definitely, but let me know what you all think about the decision. Um, answer the question. Um, do you think that is it that it is a violation, cruel and unusual punishment? What do you think can be done to help solve and alleviate this homeless problem within the United States of America?